Hey everybody, it is Tuesday. I am here. I wasn't sure if I was going to be here, <laughs> but I am. I thought we would talk a little bit um, about Instant Pot accessories. And I'll give you guys a couple minutes to get on. If you have some questions about either Instant Pot accessories or Instant Pots, feel free to ask. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about Instant Pot accessories is that I've been working on a recipe all day long and yesterday. So I've been working on these tofu egg bites, obviously egg in quotes. Um, and so I realized how much I really love some of the accessories. And I thought we would talk a little bit about this. If you look um, in the, I think it's above the video, I've got some links to a couple of articles I wrote about um, Instant Pot accessories. And um, I have a link to my Amazon influencer page because they keep making these things faster than I could possibly buy them. So I will never make enough money to have all of the things. Um, it used to be there was only one of each thing and now it's a little bit different. So one of the things that everybody asks about are like these little guys. These are stainless steel and most of them are really nice now. The very first ones were pretty crappy and I have a few of them. This is a three one and so it's a little extra expensive for what it is but I kind of like the idea of experimenting with cooking three things at once while it's all in here and as you can see this would fit in the six quart. So this would not fit in the three quart and it wouldn't be utilizing all the space in your eight quart. And so here are a couple other ones. These are twos. They have two compartments. They go all the way down. So you can't really cook something underneath it. And we'll talk about these guys in just a second. I want you to see it from the top. So you can see that once we put this in, there's really this much, this much, this much <laughs> space. So you can't really pack much in there. You could put something like an aluminum foil here, like maybe some greens and do that. And I do have water in here. That's what you're hearing because I was cooking in it. So I'm just going to put that guy over there. And then if you kind of look, this is a three quart. And you can see that there's a, a difference. And you can see that you may be even a little easier in here. See how much room there is around. And they're also much, much shorter. And I'll show you that with this different view. Um, so do any of you guys already have some sort of stainless steel kind of tiffin thing that we put in? If you notice, if you get them from the Instant Pot, they're going to have this kind of rack. And what that does is it makes it easy for you to lower and raise them, which is super nice. And I wouldn't want to do it without, honestly. You might hear my dogs, they're wandering around. They finish their treat really fast. So these things are really awesome. Now, what you want to look for in the Amazon um, write-up about these is that they're stainless steel and that they're fairly thick. And I think when I started with the the cookbook, the ultimate vegan cookbook for your Instant Pot, there was one, it was really thin, and it rusted pretty quickly. So I don't recommend that one anymore, but that was the only game in town before. Also, I've used some um, Pyrex dishes to stack. So that was another reason why I used some of those other things instead of trying these as much. So I'm going to develop some more recipes for these because I think it's nice and it's easy for people. So another thing that I love, love, is this OXO thing. And I've, I've got the link for it. I always forget what it is, but it's like, and let me show you at the top here. So instead of making aluminum foil handles, you just do this, and it's together. So I can put something in, I can take something out. And that something could be a cheesecake, obviously a vegan cashew or tofu cheesecake. Um, and actually, let's even do it with one of these guys. So let's pretend that this pottery 
um, button pan has aluminum foil on it. But look how much easier that is than to try and grab onto something hot. I think if you're only going to buy one instant pot accessory, that this would be a great one to do. I've used up so much aluminum foil in the past, making these big handles to lower things in. And this is a one deal. And it's silicone, you can put it in the dishwasher. So if you are cooking with something else and it gets stuck, you can kind of just scrape it out. Uh, a lot of people, you can always find different cake pans and things like that on Amazon as well that are stainless steel. I think this one is Echovana, I believe. And I like this a lot. It actually has the bottom comes out, which makes it really easy for a cheesecake. This is really heavy stainless steel. I also have an Echovana of the stackable. And I find that so far those have done really, really well for me. Um, so that's, that's another thing to think about. I have a whole lot of accessories. And these guys that are super fancy little pottery butt pans, right? I got these at the thrift store for no more than $5 each. So it's worth taking a look for that. And those work great. And, and remember, sometimes people worry about pottery and being in a pressure cooker. But I mean, it's been heated at a very, very high temperature. I've never had any issues at all. So that's one thing. This one is typically known as an egg trivet. But obviously, since we're cooking vegan, we're not going to cook eggs on it. But it also gives us a nice flat space to sit something on. We can look up here too. So if I wanted to sit something that needs to come all the way around, that's a nice thing to do. Whereas if I'm using, I think this is the right one for this. And so you can tell too, they've got the little feet. I'm actually change views again. There are these little feet, right? Those always go bottom. And then these handles. But do you see, it's not going to let the same circumference, right? It takes up a little bit of that. So that if you have a pan that doesn't quite fit, then this is going to be an issue. This is not going to be. Do you have to have one of these? Absolutely not. And you've got the other racks with your Instant Pot. So you've got those already. So one of the other things I was doing today using this is I was using one of these egg bites. And actually, I just took these out. So this is not clean, <laughs> just so you know. Um, and one of my um, readers, Michelle, asked me about making some tofu egg bites. And so I finally think I got it. I think got fourth batch. I think it's the winner. But so what I would do is I would blend up kind of a tofu frittata, pour into these cups. The way they say to do it is to actually use this lid and cook it like this. It's okay if you don't want to do that. I know a lot of you don't want to deal with plastic that way. And it doesn't have to seal a certain way. So you could put aluminum foil over this. You could also put um, some parchment paper and then seal it all around with aluminum foil. You can't just use aluminum foil and you can't just use clean wrap. So that's something to know. So with this, it's kind of awesome because they fit together so well. And that's how I've been cooking things for the past little while. And it's so handy also since this is silicone, it doesn't stay hot very long. So it's pretty easy to pick up. What I do, and as you can see, did from the water here, because there's water in it, I like to have a trivet or something so I can set it down. That's the same thing with if I'm doing cakes or if I'm doing anything else. Now, I have another egg bite slash muffin sort of thing that I have not used yet. This one is really, really soft. This other one is definitely much firmer. The, so I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about this one. So this is the, the one that you typically see 
if you look for like egg bite pan or something like that. I'm also going to try doing some cheesecake bites in there and um, some muffins and a few other little mini desserts and see how that works. Just remember, same thing with the bump pans. When you cook in your Instant Pot, like when you're baking, it's going to be moisture. So you're not going to get this dry, perfect crumb sort of cake or something like that, if that makes sense. Um, do you guys have any questions so far? Because I would be happy to answer your questions or tell me which things that you have or you might have questions about. You guys are quiet today. Um, another thing that I really like that's similar are these little silicone rubber bands because you can put them around a container. And I do have these marked down on some of my accessories. They don't have the exact same ones. And so that creates a similar thing where you can put it down and bring it back up pretty easy. This is the smaller ones. I got a miscellaneous pack that had a bunch of big ones in there too. So those are good. They're not as easy to find. If you find some, definitely keep an eye out on the thrift store for these. Anything that's silicone can go into your Instant Pot. It's not going to melt it. So make sure that you get silicone and not something that's going to deteriorate at high um, temperatures or it's just going to melt and it can even melt into your food. So that would be really, really bad. Trying to think, okay, here's another thing that I like a lot, which is this steamer. And I believe this is actually for three quart. And also when you're on Amazon, let's say you found this, you've looked for stainless steel um, steamer with feet or something. So it's feet and a handle. And some of these actually have a little silicone covering over this handle, which is also nice. And so, Typically, it will give you now, especially if you look up electric pressure cooker or Instant Pot, it will give you if it's a 3, 6, or 8 quart. So you may not have to do a lot of research. If it only gives you a measurement, make sure that you're measuring inside of here, right? Don't go from the edge to the edge. Go for the inside and give it a little bit of wiggle room to get down. And then that's pretty easy. So I like these a lot um, just because it's nice just to throw things in. So like if I'm making the cauliflower queso, and you can find that recipe on plant-based Instant Pot, super yummy. Um, and actually, I think I've done a video demoing it as well. So you might be able to find it on the plant-based Instant Pot Facebook page. So if you go there and you look in the videos, then you'll see a whole tons and tons of these that you can watch if they, and, and you get a hint of what it is so you don't just have to randomly watch stuff you don't want to. Um, but then I can just do that. I pull it out. The holes are small enough that if I'm using cashew pieces, they still stay in here. Some people steam food in here. Some people don't. But even if I'm just cooking something that I know I want to pull out, I don't have any liquid in, this is something that I would use. So tell me, you quiet people out there, <laughs> uh, what size um, Instant Pot do you guys have? Or tell me what the weather is like where you are. Are the one Instant Pot accessory you wish either existed or you had? So that way I can see if I might know something about it. Um, I think I have a couple other little things like, oh, this isn't exactly an accessory, but you guys know that your rings can get a little stinky. And in fact, this ring has chocolate in it still. I need to soak it really good um, because I melted chocolate and made hot chocolate in my Instant Pot, which was lovely, but it really made this ring dirty. It doesn't really smell, but I need to soak it and clean it really good. So you can get extras of these, and you can get extras of these that are in color, so you can know if one's maybe for curry and another one is for chocolate cake. Or sweet or savory is usually the way that people go. Another thing is when you get smells in here, if you only have one, you can kind of, depending on the day, you can put it outside in the sun, and that kind of helps. You can put it in the dishwasher. Um, I don't find that the dishwasher does a lot, 
but I do find that having it outside for a little while or just out of it completely, I actually store my Instant Pots this way so that the lid opening is up and this is exposed to the air. So that way that gives it a little bit of time to air out as well. You can put this whole thing in the top rack of your dishwasher. Uh, I don't do it very often, but every once in a while I feel like I want to do a real thorough cleaning. But you could even just put this in there as well. So you can do the whole thing or take it apart as you wish. And I'm trying to think. Oh, the other accessory that I really like. You guys have probably all seen the dragon. And it doesn't have to be a dragon. But what happens is that a lot of people are nervous about manually releasing the pressure. And it's just not that difficult. So one of the things you can do is you could have like a little towel. Let's see. And you don't want to cover this stuff with the towel. You just want to have it so your fingers protected, right? So maybe wrap your finger in the towel and just lightly tap back and forth. And then I'll let the steam go out and spurts like shh, 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 shh. And then you can pull it back further and take it back. What you don't want to do is just open it up like this. Maybe you have oatmeal or soup and then stuff is going to start spewing out if it's a very liquid um, recipe that you've cooked. And so I think oftentimes just doing it little by little to get most of the pressure out can be really helpful. If it's something that's thicker or chilly, it's not going to do that. So it's a matter of getting used to that. But if you just don't like it, you can get something like this. And some people use a piece of pipe. I don't know which piece of pipe they use. Then you can put it over here and you turn the dragon. So I, if I was doing this, I would have it more this way. So I'm not pointing it straight at my face. It's a cool party trick because steam comes out and it's really like, ooh, ah, and, and that's pretty cool. And so you can do that with something this decorative or not as decorative. But the, also, if you're really, really scared of letting your steam out, you might think about getting an ultra because there's a button. Let's see, is it this one? Yeah. So let me show you this. This is the top of an Ultra, and you can see that it's different. Maybe you can see, now you can see. So this has this thing, right? And it doesn't have a little pointy thing on here. So you actually use this, so your hand isn't as close, and you can make it lock, so it will go ahead and leave it out. To me, it's not the be-all, end-all or anything like that, but if you're truly not using an Instant Pot because that's your fear, then it's a good way to do it. Um, another accessory that I have that I really don't use, and this covers, um, oh, it covers a three-quart, <laughs> it covers a three-quart stainless steel insert. So I could make something and then just put it in the fridge, and then I could take it back out, wipe the condensation off, and then heat it again in here. I got it to take a picture of it, and so far I haven't used it yet. So I don't know. If you guys use these, tell me, and tell me what you like about them. And then I'll end up today with just talking a little bit about the different kinds of Instant Pots, and maybe if you don't have one already, what you should look for. And this is going to be super easy. I also have an article about this on plant-based Instant Pot, but what I'm getting ready to go add to that is something I'm going to tell you today too. So there's a three quart, a six quart, and an eight quart. If you're a very small family, a three quart is probably going to do well for you. Six quart is the normal one. It's what most of the recipes have been written for. And that is Brenna saying hello to you. Uh, an eight quart, you have to have more liquid in an eight quart to bring it up to pressure. So if you get a burn message, Making something in an 8-quart instead of a 6-quart, when it didn't call for an 8-quart, you will probably need to add some more water. So, the other thing is between, like, the Ultra, the Duo, and the Duo Plus, and the Lux. The Lux is the most inexpensive. It does not have a yogurt function. So, there's that. So, if you were going to make yogurt, that 
NYX isn't right there. However, you can go out to Walmart right now and get a NYX pretty cheaply. And I'm sorry, she's just downstairs having a fit. And I let her outside as soon as this is over. She was outside not so long ago. So then the Duo is the one that most people have. And a lot of times it might say pressure cook or manual. So if you see recipes for that, know that some some Instant Pots have a manual button and some have a pressure cooking button. And so you can translate it as accordingly. So the Duo and everything above does yogurt. The Duo Plus has a few extra buttons. Um, most of the buttons, like when it says soup, bean chili, uh, cake, egg, any of those, those are just pressure cooker settings that are already programmed in. So you don't need them. So I would not spend an extra 20 bucks to get the cake button because it's not going to do you any good in the end. It's not worth it. Um, with these Instant Pots, I found that it's definitely not the most expensive one is the best one. I do like the Ultra, and the Ultra is more expensive. I find that it burns more easily, so that's an issue with it. Um, and it's it's usually quite more expensive. I got a three-quart on sale over the holidays, and I like it. It's digital. You move... Um, a knob to move up and down to find which buttons you want to push and then how many minutes and all that. It's a little confusing, but you can get used to it. The most important thing to remember about the Ultra is you actually have to press start after you pick all your th settings or it won't start. With Lux, Duo, Duo Plus, as soon as I put it in, I do manual, it's just going to go ahead and give me a beep and let me know it's cooking. So if you're looking for an Instant Pot, and you just aren't sure what to get at all, you, you're just not sure what your requirements are, my recommendation is to get either a six-quart Lux or Duo. And I like having my yogurt function, and you can use your yogurt function for other things, so I lean towards the Duo. I don't actually own a Lux, but I, ha I know lots of people who do. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, I make yogurt, I ferment like dosa batter in it, you can proof bread in the yogurt setting. So if you're going to do any of that stuff, it's worth having. However, most of you aren't, and that's okay too. You can make soy yogurt in here really easily. Um, you can't really make almond milk yogurt or cashew milk yogurt without some other additions. So it's not impossible, but with um, a good soy milk, you just need the vegan culture, and the soy milk, and you're ready to go. Okay, so what we talked about today was a little bit about all the different kinds of accessories I've been using, and just a little bit about the different models of Instant Pots and sizes. So if you have any other questions, please let me know. I'll be checking back later. And if you have any questions about Instant Pots at all, it's all free game. So have a great day, and I'll talk to you guys next week.